I have a pretty hard and fast rule in my household that we don't watch Adam Sandler movies. We certainly don't see them in theaters. Uh, he hasn't been in a movie I've liked since Happy Gilmore. I mean, Billy Madison and Happy Gilmore, those are, those are top echelon Adam Sandler films. And I don't even dislike Adam Sandler. In fact, I think he's a quite likable individual. And his, his early albums, you know, like Tollbooth Willie and stuff, those are hilarious. I just think that his movies are terrible and lazy. But since it was recently added to a streaming platform I have, I think it's Netflix. I, th I believe it's on Netflix. I had to give it a chance. So here's my review for Uncut Gems. I brought up Tollbooth Willie earlier, and I really do feel like Adam Sandler kind of channeled back to that character. He, he's very aggressive in this film, in a good way. He, he's not, you know, humorous. He, he's very serious, but he still has a little bit of that Tollbooth charm to him. I hadn't seen a trailer for Uncut Gems. I had no idea what to expect throughout this thing. And the fact that it's an A24 or A24, however you say that, production, uh, that kind of tickled my fancy, as, as the kids say. They, they don't say that. A24 is a mixed bag. On one end, you can get some amazing films like The Witch. On the other end of the spectrum, you get Ghost Story. Now, some people love Ghost Story as well. So it's really taster's choice here. It's chef's kiss as far as what you want to do. Midsommar, which is another film by the company, reminded me of having the stomach flu, where I'm watching it and everything about it is unsettling. I'm not really sure where things are going to go or when it's going to end, but I kind of want it to. Uh, however, two or three days later, that, that, that flu stays with you. You think about it. It, it doesn't go away. That doesn't mean that I, I enjoyed the film. It just means that it, it uh, resonated on a level and it, it stayed with me. Uncut Gems, I feel like, it is probably the most traditional, straightforward movie that A24 has produced. There's nothing wild or unworldly. Um, Sandler plays a character who, who runs a New York jewelry store. He, he's very big in the industry, you know, like everybody in the city knows this guy. He's been around for a long time. But because he has an, a, a gambling addiction and he's got bookies after him, he, I mean, he's definitely made some wrong calls in his life. Th things are not going his way. That is until recently when a little bit of luck goes his way. After purchasing a, an amazing piece months ago, it has arrived. And Kevin Garnett is, yes, the basketball player, is all down to buy it. I was surprised by how good Kevin Garnett is in this movie. I mean, he's playing himself, like a, like a douchier version of himself, uh, but he was great. I, lo I loved every time he was on screen, which is more than I thought. I mean, he's in it quite a bit. This is a Sandler vehicle through and through, and he really does sell the emotion, the intention, the anxiety that happens throughout this film. In fact, I watched it with my wife, who she herself would admit she's got some pretty high anxiety. She couldn't even finish this thing. She's like, I'm out. Th this whole movie is just stressing me completely. I'm, it's tense as hell. I'm done. And I'd have to agree, the movie never really lets up. Nothing goes Sandler's way. He, he's thrown into a fountain. He's beaten up repeatedly. He gets guns pointed in his face. The guy just cannot catch a break. And the best part is he's the one causing the issues. He keeps piling things onto himself. And, and you just want to watch this glorious disaster unfold and see where it goes. Now, the young adolescent high school Adam in me would say, this is an awesome movie. It's one of my favorites of the year. I eat this kind of movie up. Older, maybe less wise Adam, definitely less uh, hopeful Adam, would look at this and say, it was decent. I I'm not too thrilled with where things ended up. I felt like the, you know, the stone, that rock was kind of a red herring. I was looking for a little bit more, I guess, out there nonsense from this since it was an A24 film. And I just, I felt the ending was kind of just, eh, I kind of expected it, honestly. There is some other characters that come and go and play and you're like, whoa, this dude's creepy as shit. What's going to happen here? And it all just is, it really is kind of misdirection. So I wouldn't say I was in love with this by any means. I will say it's entertaining. It's definitely different than many of the movies I've seen. It's not some cookie cutter crap that's been coming out of Hollywood the last few years. And I think that alone is enough to warrant a watch. The ending of the movie doesn't leave on a satisfactory note for me. It leaves on kind of a, yeah, that's pretty much what I thought was going to happen. And that's a shame because I think a powerful, interesting ending really could have elevated this film. I mean, you look at the M. Night Shyamalan early works and basically everything comes down to his endings. The movies themselves are typically kind of a drag to get through, but then that aha twist at the end elevates everything. Saw 1 was like that. I think that's a pretty crap movie all around. 
But that final twist in the first film is like, oh, okay, wow, th this, this bumps up a letter grade or two just for that. Everybody in this does a great job. They're, they're, they're playing their roles nicely. For some reason, Elsa from Frozen is in this. That was a little weird to see, but she, she was good. The music, though, it's kind of otherworldly, it's tense, it's bizarre, and I thought that was one of the highlights of the film. Anytime that music kicks in, I'm all in. Even how the film is shot has this frantic, kinetic energy to it. You know, the movie, the camera's always moving, even just a little bit, to, to keep that pace going, keep that momentum up. The more I talk about the film, the more I am starting to appreciate it, and uh, I can totally understand why people dug this a lot. Like I said, young Adam, really into this type of thing. That this Adam, more boring Adam, thinks, I think they could have even gone a little bit further than they did. Push things in that final act to the extreme and not keep it kind of grounded. I know this isn't a new movie by any means, but uh, people were asking me about it and recommending it to me, you know, previously when it hit theaters. Remember, remember theaters? Those were, those were cool. Those were a thing. Anyway, the, the, those are my thoughts. Please leave yours below. Like the video if you did, please. I think that helps. I think it helps to comment and like. <laughs> it's hard to know anymore in the world. Um, subscribe to Adam Does Movies if you haven't already. I put out movie feuds and, and rants like this. But I try to do it weekly. It's, it's been a little bit of the time, but uh, I'm getting back into it. And uh, I'll see you next time, hopefully. Thanks for watching the video. I try to put out new stuff on a weekly basis, so make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I have a second channel full of more shenanigans, and I'm also on Twitch now. So there's a lot of variety, a lot of options, and hopefully you can find these channels via links on this video itself, if I did my job correctly. Otherwise, they might be in the description below, or you can just visit the channel page. All right, take care.